Mohamed al Duwaj is the CEO of Aliyah Global Group. Mohamed graduated from Leeds University Business School in 2002 with an accounting and finance joint honours degree. He started his career at the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development as part of the Asian Projects funding team. He followed this by joining Global Investment House as investment manager, forming and managing real estate funds around the world. In 2008, he became CEO of a single family office, Alia Global, where his responsibilities include investment in real estate and private equity, investment advisory, commodities trading, and business development. Mohammed has earned the, his experience by working in diversified projects and dealing with high net worth individuals around the world. In 2017, he won Man of the Year Award from Business Worldwide Publication. The title was awarded to Mohammed due to his success at global mediation work and bringing countries together through business. Mohammed al um welcome to the Life Lab and thank you for being here today. No, thank you for receiving me. It's great to have you here. Um, I wanted to start with, uh, we've done a bit of an intro at the beginning for the yeah. listeners, but just to tell us a bit about um, Alia Group and how it how it came about. Sure. Uh, Alia Global Group is a single family office. We're based out of Kuwait and we operate globally. We've been in the business for the last 25 years. We have different line of businesses. We do investment for our own capital into direct real estate and direct private equity. Uh, we do physical commodity trading and uh, the third line of business which you are aware of is hosting family office event globally. Mm -hmm. There's a big circuit, right, for your family yeah. office event. It's yeah. all over the world now. Yeah. Um, how it started, like, I mean, I feature as a speaker many conferences since 2011 and I realized the quality of the event uh, become so commercial. You go to a family office event, you don't find any family office member, mostly advisors or consultant. Mm. Uh, you go to an investment forum, you don't find any capital source. So I decided to host my first event in Dubai to see how it goes in 2016 and it was really successful. And for me, the measurement of success for the event that the family I invited they stay the full two days. Mm. That means they really enjoy enjoy the caliber of the attendees, uh, the content, the environment, the vibe. Then we take the, we talk things things seriously, and we host our second event in 2017. Then we expand to Asia, Asia Pacific, Latam, Africa, Europe, and now we cover the whole group. And we have a, a, a team of 12 people working mainly for the family office events. For the conferences. Yeah. So it's in Dubai, it's in Singapore, in South Africa, in South. Cape Town. Yep. Um, in Mexico. Mexico, Miami. Miami for the US and for Europe. We changed the city. The first one we did in London, last year in Lake Como. This year it will be in Austria. Wow. And how, I mean, so it just, what made you kind of decide to bring it global, like to bring it outside of the region? Because it's still, even in the other regions it's branded as the middle east family office event right no no, no. no uh, we do it for by i mean we do it when we don't we keep the dna of the event so for instance the upcoming one into it's cape town for okay. the africa family office so it's only african family who are attending i mean 90 95 percent uh african families if we do it in latam to be the same thing 90 95 ah, okay. from latam Otherwise, we'll lose the DNA of the event. But there's a bit of crossover, right? I've seen like there's some True. some of the big families go to the that's other. It, and that's yeah. about 10 to 15 percent. Mm. So they like to yeah. kind of and it builds a community then, I guess. Definitely. Yeah. It's the same thing for us. Besides, it's a business uh, generating, uh, a business, business income generating. I mean, we do it because we network with other families and we have created a lot of opportunities by meeting families there, exchanging ideas, experiences and making new friends. Mm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's grown very fast since the first one. I mean, yeah. in because they were regional in the Middle East and now they, they're just cropping up, in, you know, in so many cities across the world. You know, what inspired you initially to get involved in your in your family business? Because you had a long, you had a, you know, a strong career before you joined the family business. Yeah, after graduation, I joined uh, Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development for almost two years, then I resigned. I joined a global investment hub, so running the real estate business with my boss. It was a leading investment bank at that time. In Kuwait. Yeah, in mm. Kuwait, and that they have offices in 18 countries mm -hmm. uh, globally. Uh, thanks God I resigned before the market crunch because then the, 
<laughs> the, the bank went uh, bankruptcy and now it's get merged with another investment bank in Kuwait. Uh, I was at that time in 2008, I was without job, just traveling Latin America. And yeah, then the, the position of CEO was vacant at Alia Global Group. And yeah, my father just called me up and I joined. And, so uh, it was by accident, it wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. No. It wasn't planned. And it was, was it challenging to go from sort of, you know, going into, your, to make your own mark and be your own yeah, leader? Yeah, from being an employee to be at the boss, yeah. <laughs> 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 what was that like, I mean, uh, at the time? I mean, before, I mean, my responsibility was limited because what if, if something goes wrong, I can, I mean, my boss is going to be blamed because he's always supervising me, but no, no one supervises me. So if there is a one to be blamed, it's me. It's, yeah. And you have all your, yeah. your stakeholders but in the family. But thank God I proved to my family that I am capable to do it because I managed the, uh, uh, Alia during uh, the market crunch, during the COVID. So that's enough. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, Alia has a kind of really proactive ethos um, and value that, you know, it's about creating opportunities as a family yeah. office. How does, how do you drive that, that as a value? Okay, for me, I'm not the type of guys who sit uh, behind the desk and waiting for things to, to, to be received by email or people visiting me in Kuwait. I spent half my time, I mean, we can say half the year traveling all over the world. Uh, trying to study new market, uh, new opportunities, meet other family to learn what's happening in the market, and by then, I mean we st we, we do our own, our new investment. So let me give you an example. Mm. I mean about how 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 we function. Since two thousand eight, I become the CEO of the group. We work remotely. Mm. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So even with the COVID hit, uh, I mean there's nothing changed from from our end because I believe. I mean we don't have to go and spend time commuting to the to the office and being back and uh, our type of work require f uh, from us to work in different time zones. Mm. We have business in Asia, we have mm. business in the Middle East, Europe, Latin America. So we have to make calls in early morning, late evening. So that's not, I, I don't think that would be fair for my team mm -hmm. to work, I mean, longer hours and they have to be presenting in the office. So I make them, uh, give them the flexibility to work uh, according to their schedule but at the same time, they would be uh, available when there, is, when there is a need for for, mm -hmm. for it. So when you talk about like I mean, opportunities, yeah, whenever we see like there is an opportunity in a market, let me give you an example. Mexico now is booming and the, the agriculture uh, business, I mean, it's uh, a top topic in all over the world, especially after the COVID. Mm. So what we are doing, we're not just waiting here, I mean, waiting in my office in Kuwait and uh, receiving emails from uh, people there with uh, some opportunity. No, we go there, we meet, we see things on the ground, and then we evaluate and we do the investment if, it, if, it, if it's something appealing to us. And Mexico is... Yeah, it, I'm it, just giving it yeah, yeah, I know, it's, yeah. it's interesting. And, I mean, so you, you've got, um, you know, operations or, you know, investments and opportunities all over the world. Do you, how, how does your Kuwaiti heritage, in, is, how is that part of your leadership style? Okay, I mean, for me, whenever I travel, I feel I am ambassador to my family first, then mm -hmm. my country. Okay, so that uh, reflect on all my business norms when I communicate with people, mm -hmm. and that give you, give it to me more responsibility. So, I mean, having the family name and being being uh, a Kuwaiti national that give me more responsibility to succeed and also to present it in a, in a good way. Mm. And and do you feel that you know when you're when you're kind of doing business in other parts of the world that um, I mean you would have started probably doing that way before a lot of Middle Eastern family offices or businesses were were doing that you yeah. know I mean I'm talking you know if, since 2008 that was kind of the nascent stages right of the mid, a lot of Middle Eastern countries kind of looking to kind of um, for global opportunities and, and, and connecting that way. Was that was that unusual at the time? Yeah, for sure. Like for me, let me give you an example. Uh, to go in 2008 and to do investment in Brazil, that was unusual for a lot of families, especially at that time. There was even no direct flight from the Gulf region to there. We have mm. to fly through Europe to get there. People there before the World Cup and the Olympics in Brazil, very rare who can, who can speak English. So mm. even the language barrier is uh, was something big. that you have to consider. So, yeah, at that time, it was something very strange for a family. But I mean, there is always a first time. Yeah. And then things are accepted. 
Yeah, and now it's now yeah. it's growing and growing. It's growing. Right? I mean, like now we, in March, I think Emirates will start to have a direct flight from Dubai to Bogota in Colombia. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. Are, uh, are developing a lot. Yeah, and, and Colombia is obviously, there's lots happening a there. A lot of things yeah. happening, yeah. What do you feel, so, you know, you're a successful family office and you've built up this network. How do you measure successful? Well, this is what I want to ask you. <laughs> How do you measure success? <laughs> I'm sure it's changed over the I years. Mean, but uh, successful, I mean, success is different from a person to another. Yes. I mean, for uh, some some people, it's more, more about the achievements, some people about the, the wealth they have, some people about the heritage they have. So for me, it's totally different uh, concepts. Uh, success is more about satisfaction. If you are satisfied with what you have, mm -hmm. with what you have gained, mm -hmm. then that's success. And, but I mean, you obviously have family office stakeholders that have they want to see their the performance and get their you know get res see that it, the results are coming through it's different uh, because we are not an investment bank so i don't have a target to reach at the end of each calendar mm. year from amount of new investment or amount of return as long as like there is no losses or i try to minimize the losses <laughs> but let's, let's let's reward it that way because we are not we are human at the end of the day uh, they are fine. I mean, they are fine. As I, I just mentioned to you earlier, I passed through the market uh, recession in 2008-2009 and the COVID, so yeah, I think they are happy. Otherwise, yeah. they would fire me. <laughs> no, I don't think that's mm. <laughs> and, I mean, given your experience in, um, you know, uh, leading the, the family office um, and, and the group uh, and then your career before that, do you, there's a lot of aspiring and new investors, especially these days with all of the apps, you know, the fin since fintech has kind of revolutionized the retail investor landscape and, and just people becoming more aware of, um, you know, opportunities that they could take advantage of. Do you have any advice for aspiring or new investors? I, uh, for me, I mean, let me just share my, my what we do. I mean, what I do mm. as, as Mohammed. We only I will, I only do take a decision for investment if it's something that I know, mm -hmm. I understand, and I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I will never invest into something that I don't know. I have no knowledge about it. Yeah. So that's something very important because if something goes wrong at the, uh, I mean uh, later, you would understand the reason behind it. If it's something that you don't understand, like for me, you were just mentioning about apps and so on. For me, that for me it's like Chinese. I don't understand. It, I don't get it. I use it. But if you, if I go into details, no, it's not it's not my things. Mm -hmm. So I would never. I mean, as of this moment, I will never invest into that. But in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. That's good advice. Yeah. I, mean, I think that you know, the, especially kind of after COVID, there was a bit of a frenzy of people kind yeah. of doing things, and and obviously a lot of people lost a lot of money then because they were. You know what's? Uh, I mean, I think most of the people now. They try to follow the trend. Mm. And when it comes to investment, there is no trend. There mm. is opportunities, totally different things. It's not fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not fashion. Yeah. yeah, that's really that's really good advice. Yeah, I know it's, it's simple, but it's it's really true. Um, and uh, I wanted to ask you a bit about um, going back to kind of when you started your journey as a CEO and being the boss. Um, you obviously overcame you know, you must have faced a lot of challenges then at the beginning, maybe. How did, what were some of the challenges that you faced, like becoming a CEO and the leader of, of the group and then building it up? And how did you overcome them? Having a good manpower to have a good team, make them to work with you as a family, that's something very important and it's very challenging because to, to find like a talented people who are emotionally connected to the business that's mm. not something easy you have to really to search and hire and fire until you get the right people emotionally connected yeah. to the business can you mean that they just really care about the business that's it. they care about the business like as, as if it's their yeah, business that's it mm -hmm. and uh, for me and maybe this is something an issue with me i don't like to have details so when i give you like a, a, a task to do it don't come back with me with update. Just come back with me with the outcomes. We don't have time to waste. Mm, yeah. So don't come. I mean, that was one thing I was always taught is like, don't go to your boss with problems. Yeah. <laughs> just that, like, yeah, just take me that find a way yeah. to get over them That's and it. then go back. I mean, uh, I mean, to be honest, like I have one of my team member. I mean, uh, I give her a, lot of, a number of chances, but she didn't get it. I mean, she 
she I mean whenever we have a meeting I'm meeting one to one meeting with her she has to tell me every thing she does she did like during the day from a phone call from having a lunch break and no <laughs> not for me yeah yeah and you have a strong team now i mean i've met is yeah. do you have a team in in for the conferences for example is yeah it... for the conference as, as i mentioned to you like we have a big team now working for us and uh, we have like for the investment and uh, the good thing about the investment team um, i have them since 2014 so, I mean, they have been, we've been together for the last 10 years. Okay. I mean, they know their job. I know my job. And they only come back to me with results. Okay. Okay. And they obviously are separate to the yeah, conferences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, like... have, we, have tam- we have team member like in Kuwait, uh, in Dubai, uh, working remotely. We have in Lebanon. Uh, we have in Sao Paulo, uh, Seoul, and Milan, and, and Milan, Italy, and uh, Paris and, uh, and France. In Korea as well? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So when you're talking about overcoming the challenges, you did you kind of learn by yourself or you must have had, you mentioned your father and obviously, you know, your family, you know, has a very prestigious legacy in Kuwait of, of you know, their, the genesis of their business and how they grew to the point that they have a family office. But did you have mentors or did you, who were the people who influenced you like to become a CEO and a leader? <sighs> To be honest, uh, I learned a lot from my grandfather and my grandmother when I was a child. I mean, they passed away when I was I mean, my, my teenager, but I still remember everything they were saying, their action and matters, because my grandmother, she was staying for the last of her life, I mean, at my house. So I was very... She was living in your yeah. house. So I was very connected with her. Uh, and my grandfather, my father, he was responsible for his inheritance so he has to go to see him like every other day and there mm. was accompanying him so i was listening since i was a child for all his uh actions and uh, the action for for the situation so i learned a lot from from them honestly from for your grandparents yeah. more and, uh, but not in the, in the current i mean uh, and as of now if you ask me who's your mentor i will say to you i mean I learned from the Prophet Muhammad because, I mean, all his actions and says are inspired from Allah, subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala. So, I mean, to read his history and to listen in my free time or when I'm in the plane, that uh, teach me a lot. But a physical person, no, I don't have, honestly. And you're, <laughs> uh, th- that's really beautiful. Uh, but, and then your grandparents obviously instilled. Yeah. Do you mean that they instilled? Because they are, my, my grandmother, she was a businesswoman. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you learned it from about yeah. business from her. Yeah, she, and she was a tough woman. Really? A tough woman. Which was pretty unusual then at yeah. the time because that would yeah. have been. That was it was very rare. Yeah. I mean, most women didn't work then, right? No, so... she, yeah, yeah, she, no, she was running like she was running farms. Really? Yeah. And so she kind of instilled that like a work ethic and, you know, values about how to run yes. a business and in, in you. And that yeah. co- did that kind of inspire you then yeah. to think, well, I want to. Up to now, up to this moment, I still remember, I mean, what she's saying and how she reacts to situations and how she deal with it. Really? Mm-hmm. And, and that's you feel like that's really kind of influenced your leadership and how you grew your career that's because you didn't have you said that you didn't. When you let when you when you lost your well you you didn't have a job at that point before yeah, your dad I was jobless you were jobless <laughs> but did you didn't have a plan at the beginning you know of like where am I going to be in ten no. years or twenty years I was years? in Latin America surfing uh, chilling. traveling chilling you were in your twenties then yeah yeah I was in 20s. so you were just taking yeah. a year out yeah. And which is good. I think that's also really can be really good at certain points in your life to do that. Life is all about balancing. I mean, you cannot work the whole time and we we cannot uh, have holiday the whole time. It's all about balancing. Mm. Even we were just discussing about the Chinese culture uh, Mm. earlier. I mean, it's uh, different from our culture because we cannot work 24 hours. Mm. We we need to have our social space, uh, leisure, Mm. person, just to be by yourself doing nothing. Well, I remember reading something about... um, they were sort of doing a correlation with people that had, you know, either developed or invented remarkable things that affect like Steve Jobs or I can't remember, there were there were a few others, but all of them had, you know, massive kind of gaps where they just went off and traveled yeah. or like did nothing really. But apparently that's super But I don't important. wait for the gaps, I create gaps for myself. You don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
No, because I think it kind of helps your brain to just Definitely, reset to and then you become better at your, what, when Definitely. you're performing in your role. Yeah. Definitely. Like, I mean, uh, between a holiday and a holiday, I have another holiday for me. <laughs> but I always take short holidays. And I'm the type of people, I mean, when I take a holiday, I don't switch off. Yeah, you're kind but, of yeah, a little but bit. I but but I, tell my, I, tell, I tell my team, okay, like I'm in a holiday for three, four days. So if there's something urgent, can call me. If not, yeah, yeah, uh, just if wait. Not. Things can wait, you know. Mm, mm. So you didn't, it, you know, the mentors, were, I mean, that's really interesting about your grandmother, like, especially because then, I mean, that would have been, you know, so two generations, like there yeah. were very few women who were running businesses then. That um, was really tough. Yeah, you'd want. She must have been pretty tough. Yeah, yeah to to do that. Um, and and so that she kind of inspired you, and and her learning from her has like affected or helped you develop your own career, yeah. right? Um, and what I mean, but when you started, Aliyah, you didn't have a plan, did you? When you kind of took over the role and you decided, okay, I'm going to go in and run the family business, did you have a blueprint or anything in your head of like, this is where I'd like it to go? Yes, I mean, before it was a very low profile uh, group. They have very, I mean, selective business to invest in. But uh, after, I mean, 10 years after I, run the, I start to run the shows, I mean, we are expanding globally. I mean, now the... I mean, it's become a brand name. Mm. Let's put it that way. It, it, it has. It's become, yeah. and it's all over the world. Obviously, yeah. with the with the conferences and everything, and and you're connecting family offices all over the world through your network, and you've yeah. built a community of family offices, right? It's it's a bit, it's remarkable. Really. So now, even if I have any friends from the region, they want to be connected. Like they just call me up, oh, Mohammed, do you know any family from Mexico or Brazil or China? We just put them in touch. Yeah. Because, and that's the benefit of, I mean, it's a hard work. It's traveling, it's fun, but it's not easy. No, yeah. Okay. But uh, again, uh, the benefit from it. Yeah. Um, and what's, I mean, what's your, what's one of the key things that you know now that you wish you'd known at the beginning of? Value of time. What do you mean? I Just... mean, I wasted a lot of time in the past. I'm not regretting because I learned from it, but... I wish I learn earlier the value of time. Like, can you give me an example of like? Like, utilize my time. Let me give you an example. Uh, before, if it uh, we don't, I mean, I have no interest to invest into X country, for instance. Mm. And if someone uh, came to Kuwait and they want to meet up with me, I would meet up with them. But for me now, that waste of time because I I knew that I would never invest there. Right. So why I should waste my time and the other person's time? I was doing this mistake in the past. For instance, uh, doing a research or something and something that not of interest to me. So why should I do it? I would just prefer just to chill at house, watching my TV series, mm. doing nothing than wasting. Yeah. Uh, but do you think there's value though sometimes in just meeting people and having a chat? Like sometimes you can go and meet someone and maybe it opens. Maybe. You know, yeah. But what's the chances? I know it's like maybe if one it's in a hundred. Yeah, if it's fifty percent, it's okay. But if it's ten percent, five percent, there's no. And then it's not really worth it. Yeah. yeah, I suppose especially as you. But but that do you think that that could depend on the level in your career? Like when you're beginning, it's it's good to go out and meet lots of people, you know, and you build a network. But then when you reach a certain point, yeah. But why I build the network in some in some areas that that um, it's not it's not really related to me you know mm, mm, i understand what you're saying there yeah i understand and plus if you you know when you reach a certain point of success you don't need to keep going out and trying to see yeah. what's the right thing to do yeah and for me also uh, be besides like just i mean wasting the time also utilizing the time i mean uh, i wasted a lot of time doing nothing and i could even enjoy life, life you better. know That's yeah it. yeah how do you enjoy life now now that you've reached a certain level of... Uh, explore the whole world. Explore, still traveling. Yeah, I, now I reach like 75%. Really? Yeah, that... I love traveling. And uh, for me, whenever there is opportunity, I just do it. Like for instance, next week, um, I have to be in Europe, but mm -hmm. I'm spending the weekend in Lapland in Finland. In Finland? Yeah, oh. just to snowmobile. Oh, wow, yeah. that's... Yeah, so whenever there's opportunity, I just do it, you know. And uh, I try to explore as much country as I can. And yeah, before okay. I get old. 
before you go. You... And they'd be I just like uh, watching what's happening around me and it's, instead of taking action. <laughs> well, I, you've got lots of time to keep traveling. Before you In go. my family, they always passed away from both sides after the age of 100. So I'm so, still, I haven't reached middle age yet. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you've got a lot of time left yeah. to explore the world. And is there any, are there countries that stick out in your mind as like your favorite places to visit? I mean, there is no favorite. To, I mean, I love Latin America, so that's out of question. But when you ask me what favorite city is, not there is no favorite city because every city has its own charming. Mm. So, I mean, I cannot compare New York to Paris to Rio de Janeiro to Kuwait, which is my home. I love my home. I would never see myself living outside Kuwait. Mm. And despite it's a boring country for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's my home. It's I love home. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you most proud of from a your time? Of? Yeah. I mean, just to bring Ali a brand from a local family business to a global brand name, that's a big achievement. And I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. To have it clean and to take the responsibility of the family legacy 100% on my shoulder, that's uh, another thing that I'm proud of it. Yeah, that's really... Yeah, because for me, I care about reputation more than, any, than anything because money goes and come, but the reputation gone, you cannot uh, bring it back. That is, I, I completely think that's yeah. a super important message that is lost on a lot of people these yeah. days, but reputation is everything. We're not too greedy, or I'm not too greedy, and even my family are not too greedy. For that reason, we really keep a good reputation. Mm -hmm. And your core values. And satisfied. We are very satisfied with what we have. When I wake up every morning and I can walk, I thank my God, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a gift. That is a gift, yeah. yeah. Do you have any regrets? No, I don't no. regret because for me, the mistake I've done in my life like the time, uh, utilizing the time I was mentioning to you, it's a lesson. Uh, in 2010, I got accepted by a very reputable uh, university to study my master. And before I paid the tuition, I was thinking, which is better, I mean, to go and study academic, uh, to spend like my two, two years in academic studies or just be working and learning from my mistakes and the practice. Then I just decided, it was the last minute, I said, no, I will not go to study my master, I will just uh, work. work. There is nothing, don't get me wrong, there is mm. nothing uh, wrong about studying, uh, I mean, to have the postgraduate studies, but for me, I have just a different view, that's all. And Newton, when he got about the graph, when he knew about the graffiti, he didn't go to university. He was sitting under the tree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, work experience, like doing it in real life is... Yeah. And if you ask most of the successful people, if, if you want to hire someone who has experience or someone who has a qualification, they will ask you, they, they will say, definitely for the experienced person. Yeah, of course, because they've done it yeah. and they've proved themselves. Yeah, I, I completely... You can see that even a lot of people, you know, um, that graduate from you know, and then when you kind of they go into the role they struggle to actually do it because it's that's the story of the startup yeah. they have great idea but they're not uh, business uh, minded so they mm -hmm. don't know how to run the business mm -hmm. so they don't have the experience they just they are creator mm -hmm. but not running yeah. yeah they are yeah that's so true yeah how do you ensure Aaliyah remains adaptable and kind of dynamic in in the world today that you know it's the the business landscapes are changing I mean the last few years you've, we've had COVID all sorts of you know then it kind of in this region anyway a boom in the region with a lot of growth how does how as you're leading it through all the changes in the business landscapes what what is your kind of um how do you do that how do you stay ahead uh as you know, we have the conferences and the conferences, we meet a lot of like family offices from different regions. So we are exchanging experiences and knowledge and that keep us up to date from the people who are running the, uh, the, the economy, mm -hmm. not from the media, which they want to show you what, uh, what, the, what, they, what, what they believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and that keep us uh, up to date and adaptive to any changes. And it's... One thing I'd like to ask is, you know, is family offices, I mean, it's kind of yeah. a niche world, right? And and um, are there big differences between um, the kind of landscape of family offices in the Middle East or Africa or Latin America? Yeah. What are the kind of 
differences between them? The culture. So the you know they're a different culture. And what what what's kind of the thing that stands out the most? Or some more closed off, or some more open, or how does it work? I mean, people in the Western world, when I say Western world, maybe the U. I mean, I mean the U.S. and Europe. They are more open, uh, and for them, it's more business than a family mm-hmm. when it comes to the family office. But in the U.S. In the U.S. and the, the Europe. And this is my my personal mm-hmm. opinion. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to Latin America and the Middle East, is more family oriented. So the, the family member, they feel more uh, attached and responsible toward their family office. And they, they, they have to work, to work there uh, uh, after graduation mm. to join the family force. Um, Africa, it's a frontier market. It's still like the family office concept is not happening in the correct way. So they need time to structure it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Asia, they, I think they are more similar uh, to the Middle East, but still they have the business mind. So for them at the end of the day, it's like an investment firm more than a family office. Mm-hmm. And uh, and what are some of the most popular kind of topics at the family office events? Is it sort of that people want to understand? Is it legacy? Is it succession planning? Is mm, it? We try, I mean, we try our, our best to diversify according to what's happening in the market. Let me give you an example. Nowadays, when we, ever, we, we conduct like the Middle East uh, event, we always talk about Saudi Arabia because it's a big topic with all the changes and uh, mm. developments happening. So we cannot uh, skip this point, but we don't repeat the things about succession planning, the legacy, because this is a repeated topic. I know there's some development, but we only do it if there is a need for it. Like for instance, for Africa, as I mentioned to you earlier, it's still like, the family office concept is still like it's at early stage, so they need they need to learn about it, and mm. it will be a good opportunity at the at the event to bring experts to talk about the legacy and the and the succession planning. Mm-hmm. LATAM is similar to the Middle East. I mean, there is a lot of things happening when it comes to the political uh, level. Argentina, the new regime, uh, Ecuador, uh, Colombia, Mexico. So they want to talk about the geopolitics more than just succession planning and... Uh, mm-hmm. Because that could affect yeah, their business. That, yeah. yeah, and their family business. Big time. Um, and what about I family of family businesses that sort of then become listed, comp- go to list part of their business and then keep their family office? Is that something that happens a lot? Yeah, and that, yeah. I mean, we experienced that in Kuwait. Uh, I mean, it's their own decision. We cannot uh, interfere. I mean, for us, that's not in our agenda mm-hmm. because first of all, we are a boutique family office. We are not a huge family mm-hmm. office. Secondly, uh, I mean, we need to keep it. We need to keep our culture. If we just go listed, just listed it, company. Mm-hmm. And what uh, you mentioned that Latin America and Mexico in particular is a very exciting place right now in the sense of yeah. there's a lot of growth. It's there's a lot of things happening. Um, what are there, um, are there other kind of regions or countries on the radar, you know, from a family office perspective that you think, I mean, Africa is obviously. For us, yeah. or uh, I mean, for us, I mean, Africa, we've done business in Africa between 2009 to 2011 mm-hmm. in the gold business. We did a, a good money in the gold trading, but I don't think we will repeat the experience in the coming few years. Because in Africa, if you want to do business, you have to get a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And we cannot afford that now. You have to go through it. Yeah, we have to get a lot of time there to mm. do business. You have to spend a lot of time yeah, face-to-face and be it. there. And we, at this time, we cannot afford that. Uh, Colombia is a booming market. Brazil with a new with a new president, uh, Lula, yeah, that, that's a good... Uh, there's a lot of uh, new opportunity happening. Asia, we don't... I mean, we, we don't... It's not under our radar now. The region itself, Kuwait, with the new Emir, I think there's a lot of opportunity. And here where we are, even uh, now, we have a project in Kuwait for food recycling. Mm-hmm. Which and is a big yeah. thing in the region right yeah, now. We yeah, call it, uh, we call it Ali Earth. We, we are doing like a food recycling uh, that generates power to for a, for a vertical farming facility. Mm. So we'll take the food waste to produce f- uh, food. So you take the food waste to produce food? Food, yeah. And how does that work? We'll take the food uh, waste, uh, recycle it into energy to power a vertical farming facility mm. that generates food. So the, the the vertical farming where they grow... Yeah, the from, leaves. Yeah, yeah the, the greenery, leaves. Yeah. 
And is that in supermarkets or at plants? No, no, it's a plant. The, no, it's a plant. It's a plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's some vertical farming as well being introduced. Yeah, yeah no, but that's the larger scale. That's the larger scale. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are looking for like 400,000 uh, kilo, uh, kilogram production annually. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the food uh, recycling plant will take 150 ton a day of food waste. That's in Kuwait. Yeah. In Kuwait. Um, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's really exciting. So that's a new, that's a new initiative that that's you guys have, yeah. have done. And are there any books or movies that have had a profound impact on your life? I mentioned to you earlier, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu like he's, he's for me a good mentor. Like, I mean, his life and it's a big thing for me. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you do, um, Umrah regularly? Yeah. you you go to Umrah a lot. Yeah. You do Umrah? Every year, no, just wondering, yeah, yeah, no, uh, Umrah. Like, I mean, every I mean, I do Umrah and Hajj every year, really, Hajj since 2002, except the two years of the COVID oh, 2020 20, 20, 20 and 21. So, so, since 2022, yeah, I've been doing Umrah every year. Uh, sorry, I Hajj every year and Umrah during like, like the last week of Ramadan. I always go there. The last week of yeah. you do Umrah, I, I will tell you something very interesting. I have friends from Saudi Arabia and UAE, we don't plan it. We always meet there at the same time. <laughs> I'm not joking. By accident? Yeah. No, not by, I mean, we knew that we were going there. I knew but them. you always see yeah, them? Yeah, I knew them from the mosque, from the haram. And like, we become good friends. I mean, we are, we are, we are and I mean, lately we have a group chat on WhatsApp. Uh, but I mean, we don't say, oh, when you are going, we always go and meet there in the same spot. Just by coincidence? By the same spot. We know we always pray at that, the, the That's same spot. That's amazing. Yeah. And ha- that, th- have you noticed, I mean, the huge increase in um you know pilgrims going as well to the kingdom right yeah. in the last few years it's a lot more a lot more but we know our ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that must be incredible what's the next phase i mean you seem to have like kind of brought it to this incredible point now what's next what next we want to go into new businesses so now we are going even to into the entertainment business this is the plan oh yes uh, and also like to be in different countries just to expand the brand name of the Falia. and w- entertainment in like movies or music or we'll start with movies and then but we have we have our own agenda and we are partnering with uh, the film producer of the Irish man uh, his name is Gaston. He's uh, Mexican American. Oh. Uh, with his company, it's called Fabrica. It's already in the business for the last uh, fourteen years, that's and yeah, you will hear a lot of about it like in the coming few months. That's very exciting. Yeah. And would that be entertainment for the produced for this region? You will hear about it. Okay, I I'm really understand. excited yeah. to hear about that because that's. Um, but we have our own agenda because you know lately, like most of the producers they have especially from the u.s they have their own agenda mm-hmm. so we want to enforce our own agenda and mm-hmm. that. to create that content yeah. okay because there's a lot of you know movies being shot here and now in the yeah. region and um you know all sorts of kind of grants for yeah, we're in discussion with like with some i mean with some i mean th- Parties here in like in UAE, in, in Qatar, and Saudi Arabia for that. That's amazing. I mean, because they had the recently the big um, festival in Saudi, yeah. you know, the film festival, and I mean everybody from the entertainment business was there. It was in, insane. It was incredible. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. So that's the next stage yeah. then. Well, um, I'd like to thank you really sincerely, Mohammed, for coming and, and sharing. No, thank your you for receiving today. it. Was a really pleasure. Uh, to have a conversation with you because I know you don't often do interviews so it's a real it's a real pleasure and a real we really appreciate your time and wish you the best for thank the next thank you and uh, hope to see you very soon thank you thank Mohammed. you thank you